Hey guys, welcome back. My name is Katie. I'm Adding Up Addingtons and today I'm here to talk to you about some of the stages of foster care that you will go through when you start fostering. So stick around. If this is your first time here, welcome. My name is Katie. I'm a mom of eight. We are former foster parents. We're an adoptive family. We homeschool. We own our company. And we just talk about all the things over here. So I would love for you to hit that subscribe button down below and stick around with us because we love to share our adventures with you. So again, if you are just coming over to our channel, I'm so glad that you are here. We are former foster parents and three of our eight children were adopted from foster care. So we had a total of seven different foster placements over the course of a couple of years and three of them have become part of our forever family. Um, but we've done this a few times and so I wanted today to share with you some of the stages that you go through when you are fostering. So first up is the honeymoon stage. This is when a placement first comes into your house and everything is new and exciting both for them and for you and not to downplay obviously the trauma and the loss that got these kids into this situation in the first place but they're coming into a new home with new people and new rules and new food and new culture and new jokes and new language and it's all new and it's a little overwhelming for them and of course it's new for you because you are trying to get to know this child from scratch um, but they want to be on their best behavior and you are going to see the best of that child um, so they are going to want to try to be good and impress you and you are trying to welcome them and let them know that they are loved. And so there's this honeymoon stage where you think like, oh, this is great. I can do this. This is going to be wonderful. What a sweet kid. Um, all of that. So here's my advice for you in this stage. Do the fun things. Take pictures and build your mental snapshot because the honeymoon stage, just like in marriage, doesn't last forever. And this picture of this kid is what you are going to want to come back to mentally um, in really hard times. And you're gonna to wanna to remember the sweet, fun, best behavior kid um, that you first met. So build up your mental picture during this honeymoon stage and enjoy it. Um, don't, try not to dread it coming to an end, but use it to build up the picture of that kid that you want to remember because there will be days ahead that you have to remind yourself of what a great kid this is and why you're doing what you're doing. Next comes um, what I'm calling the foster care grief stage. And it is somewhere between a grieving and an overwhelm. This is when you are full-blown head-on into working with the foster system. This is when you have kids going to therapy and meetings and uh, visitations with their family and extra doctor's appointments and therapists and specialists and more specialists and more specialists and we're, we're getting into maybe school issues or behavior issues and these things start popping up and all of the appointments and requirements and visitations that come with foster care start to kick in and it stops being new and exciting and it starts being overwhelming. So this is when all these new routines start to get old and they start to get overwhelming and you kind of realize at some point that you can't go back to the normal that you had established before you started fostering this child. I know this kicked in for me um, when our little girls who, um, they are now our fully adopted daughters and when they first came in they were little they were babies they were a year and a half and a newborn um, and there were just there were a lot of appointments involved in that um, obviously babies need a lot of doctor's appointments um, and Nora needed even more and then you add in visits and court dates and caseworkers out at the house and talking to lawyers and 
all of that stuff and I had a moment I just remember walking up the stairs to our house I had a moment where I realized my life was so easy with three little tiny kids and I had no idea um, because I went from when you have biological children you have control over their lives most of the time and you um, you know decide when they need to go to the doctor or when they need medical attention or what they're going to do for the day and in foster care so many of those things are dictated for you um, that I, I realized at one point that I was grieving the loss of, of my normal life and that I had given up control of our schedule and our days and the decision making to outside influences and not to say that that was bad but I had to personally deal with that change um, and then I noticed it happening again um, as other placements would come in and um, and I would realize oh, I miss the routine we have with just you know these five little kids or these six little kids or I miss the routine that we had before such and such changed and I think that this is a normal life uh, process that we all have to go through but I really noticed it um, very poignantly with foster care so I, I caught myself realizing like oh I miss the routine of this season I miss the routine and and I had to kind of grieve that because here's what can happen it is really easy when you hit this season to start questioning yourself and the decision that you've made you start questioning did I even do the right thing like what did I get myself into maybe I'm not cut out for this maybe I shouldn't have gotten into foster care in the first place maybe I can't do this and it's really easy to start questioning yourself and the truth is it's just growing pains it's just growing pains and so um, recognizing that you are grieving the change that you have gone through um, can help you to move through and and it's not wrong to feel that way um, but it can be a very self-defeating if you don't a self-defeating feeling if you don't recognize it for what it is if you don't say like okay there's not actually something wrong with me i am just processing and grieving the changes that have come in my life and it's going and it, it's hard right now and that's okay it's hard right now but i will move through it so recognizing that makes a huge difference so after the honeymoon stage has passed and you have moved through the grieving and the overwhelm um there's a kind of settling that happens and this could look one of a few different ways so one way that this may look is that um bio parents or family are working their plan and the child is meeting their goals on the family's permanency plan and everybody is kind of uh, building their life back up and getting their stuff together and you can sort of start to see the light at the end of the tunnel and you realize why you've been doing this you realize why you've been investing all the hard days and the long appointments and stuff in these kiddos and their parents and their families and you you can see what's happening um, and you have to move through all those earlier stages to, to get to this point, but that's one way that life may settle down. On the other end of the spectrum, you may find that the legal system is doing its work and, um, you know, foster care is meant to be a temporary solution, whether that is to reunify with a family or to move into adoption in another form. And so, um, maybe if the parents aren't working their plan the legal system is working and cases are moving forward and evidence is being gathered and um, you have some direction that you are moving in your life and for us this is where our little girls went um, after a season of uncertainty and busyness and overwhelm and appointments and all of the things 
um, you know, we moved into this process where it was a long time, but we knew this is the next step and this is the next step and this is the next step and, and we are moving towards adoption with them. And again, that took over a year, so it wasn't fast, um, but it was kind of a settling from that initial overwhelm. The other thing that comes with um, the, the legal process working is that a lot more of your coping skills with your child, your foster child, um, draw closer to home. For us, when it wasn't as much about making sure all the right forms were filled out and all the doctor's orders were followed and all of the lawyer's questions were answered and the court's requirements were met, it became more about, okay, what are the long-term solutions that we need to put in place with our kiddos um, to help them cope through their own stuff and to help them um, anchor themselves in here at home. So a lot of those things that you are doing to please other people um, become the things that you do to um, to cope well at home and to relate well at home. And so even just, it sounds like a really subtle shift and it is, but even just that settling of like, okay, this isn't just to meet everybody else's requirements anymore, um, but it's to help us live well at home. Um, that makes a big difference. Okay. And then the final way that you may see settling happen, um, and this is rare, but it does happen, is that you may begin to realize that some of the behaviors and needs of the child in your home are more than you have to give. It's easy to hit that initial um, grieving and overwhelm stage and think like, oh my gosh, I can't do this. What did I get into? Um, and, and have a hard time distinguishing that that's grief and not truly an inability to meet needs. Um, but once you move through that initial grieving process and you start to see some things that are um, escalating or getting worse or um, just not um, responding to treatments and therapies that you are using at home, this may be the time that you have to decide, I can't meet the needs of this child. And um, I'm going to say that this is the exception and not the rule. Um, it has happened to us um, where we just gave it our all and at the end of the day, um, kids just needed stuff that we couldn't give them. Um, they needed much more focused and specialized attention and treatment. And we didn't have that. And um, But knowing that that was a truly clear-eyed look at, with the help of caseworkers and therapists and doctors to say, these kiddos need this list of things and it's not available where we are or it's not available within our resources or it's not available um, with our other kids schedules um, you know to know that that was not my grief speaking and it was an objective view with a child's team um, that was helpful so that may be what settling looks like and like I said that is the exception and not the rule but it happens and I wanted to distinguish for all of you out there considering foster care um, that that initial grief and overwhelm is different from a an objective clear-eyed agreement among a child's team that they need more and here's the thing about all of these stages the honeymoon stage the grief stage and the settling stage and these are my terms for them this isn't like a an academic analysis of this by any stretch but um just these are stages i found myself going through over and over and over again as we did foster care and so um the other thing is that there are not like nice clean cut lines between these stages, I think you will generally recognize when you have moved from one into another. Um, but I mean, just like with the rest of life, anything can happen that can uh, restart that process for you or can set it off. Or if you have a child in your home and you say yes to another, you may be in separate stages with separate kids and um, have to kind of process them at different times. Sometimes they can happen 
simultaneously, um, you know, or new things will kind of set off the process again. There may be new behaviors or triggers or needs that happen that kind of, uh, you know, start back over. If you have a child who is suddenly displaying new behaviors and they need an entire new set of therapies and you have to add that back into your schedule, you may kind of start that grief over again at, um, your routine being upended and so these stages can can recycle through and and they're not clean cut obviously as most psychological <laughs> stages and steps are not um so they can overlap and they can happen simultaneously with different kids um but i want I want this to be an encouragement that there's a very real process that you as a foster parent will go through. We talk a lot about the kids and the trauma and the things that they have to deal with and that is very, very real. Um, but a lot of times we don't recognize them in ourselves. So uh, let me know down below if you are fostering, if you have seen these stages in your life. Um, and what you've done to help you cope. If you have any other questions about foster care and adoption, let me know those as well. Don't forget to subscribe and we will see you next time. Thanks for being here.